At the end of BVS, we, um, we leave Bruce, um, you know, fearful that there is an attack coming and needing to, wanting to gather up as many uh, metahumans as he possibly can. So the sort of nascent uh, stages of team building is, is where we're left. And uh, it's, this movie starts with, you know, Bruce actively recruiting and looking and researching and trying to find these superhumans that he's, uh, he believes are out there. For me, it was really important that she would be the glue of the team, um, that we would track the same character that we victoriously established on the, in the Wonder Woman movie. And I think that one of the special things that Diana has, uh, one of the most beautiful qualities are the fact that she just cares for people and she, in, in the most sincere way. So when, when I got the script, um, I made a point out of the importance of Diana being this, this, this glue to the team, that she would make each and every one of them, even if it's in small moments, uh, feel stronger and loved and capable. When we find him in Justice League, he's definitely, we actually find him in Iceland and there's a, there's a you know tribe of people up there, and they're kind of on the 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 outskirts of, of of the of the world. And he helps them and brings them fish, and they kind of look up to him and they take care of him. And he doesn't want to be around a lot of people. He's very much the outsider and the the lone wolf. Don't we all want an Alfred? I mean, I would love an Alfred, um, somebody who is uncomplaining, who keeps the vehicles running, keeps the mower sharp chops the wood, keeps the fire going, does a bit of cooking, um, always seems to be there and ready and willing. It's, uh, he, he's, he's a dream, really. I mean, he's not a superhero. But in some small, retiring way, I think he could be regarded with a small H as a bit of a hero. Commissioner Gordon is a badass. That's my take on Commissioner Gordon. I don't know how much we'll see of that in, uh, in these movies, but um, I think that's a sort of uh, under-recognized or underappreciated part of who he is because obviously he exists in the world where Batman is the ultimate badass. Um, but, uh, you know, tough guy, ex-Marine, you know, worked his way up and, uh, and uh, can handle himself in, in the world of uh, thugs and bad guys in which he exists. JK, he's a perfect uh, Commissioner Gordon. He's got that kind of uh, realism, you know, down where he feels just world weary and, and gritty and feels like a guy who's been working the beat of Gotham, you know, for decades. And uh, he lends a real gravitas to the role. Where we find Barry in this film, um, he's just, it's the awakening. It's the, he's, the, the powers are, are still fairly new to him. We find him in a place where he's still very clumsy and he's not yet, he's not yet breached the event horizon as it were. He hasn't like broken that limit, but he's starting to feel it and it's coming and it sort of looms and it waits for him. Cyborg, AKA Victor Stone is a college athlete and a tragic accident befalls him, you know, by no fault of his own. Um, and his father, in order to save his life, uh, he uses cybernetics, advanced cybernetics, to replace his lost limbs and essentially save his son's life. Um, the technology that he uses in this film is apocalyptic tech. You know, it's nothing that this world has ever seen. So it imbues him with super strength, super durability, he can fly, he can interface with anything technological. He can, uh, he can patch into your cell phone, he can know your whole history. He, he has worlds of information at his disposal. Uh, not just from our galaxy, from other galaxies and universes, which is pretty cool. He doesn't get, uh, he's not met with enthusiasm by everybody that he encounters. Um, you know, some people are a little bit more reluctant to join up, be part of the team. Uh, Ezra, you know, the Flash signs right up, but uh, Aquaman it takes some convincing. Cyborg also takes some convincing uh, by, from Wonder Woman. But together, we collectively start to assemble this group, and eventually they, they come around and realize that there's a need for us to work together. Once they figure out a way to find them, they got to figure out a way to get them to come along. 
Um, and that has its own humorous, um, you know, results uh, in just exactly how they do end up coming along, uh, what the reasons that they have for doing it, how much, uh, you know, how much influence, you know, Bruce and Diana actually have in uh, getting them to see the light. Those kinds of things are character revealing, but also a lot of fun. I think she enjoys working with the team, and I, I, I think that after having the team uh, on Wonder Woman and working with them and enjoying other people's company, I think that she really feels um, she feels good about about fighting with them and also being among among people who are similar to her because they're all outsiders. Flash and Cyborg and Aquaman and Bruce, they're all outsiders. They're all abnormal and they're loners and they have these special gifts. And finally, after so long of being by herself, she has teammates, which is wonderful. He's recently become Cyborg. He's been Cyborg for maybe, maybe a year, maybe less. And, uh, you know, he's lost everything that he's held dear. He's lost his body, he's lost his mother. You know, he, he's had unbearable hardships just compiled on top. You know, he's left him, he's been in solitude for the last year and a half. So when Wonder Woman asks Cyborg to join them, he doesn't want to. You know, he's turned his back on the world because the world, he feels, has turned its back on him. He's trying to use this stuff that he's figuring out. He's trying to use it for good, that becoming immediately a very loaded and strange concept. And he finds this group of people who are, who are doing that. He's brought into this group of people, and it's amazing for him. It's what he's always dreamed of, um, and certainly that dream has intensified. You know, he grew up a child with traumatic circumstances in the world of superheroes. You're just waiting for those other superheroes to come and and recognize you. So I think that when it happens, you know, he's just so happy and thrilled. From Ezra and, and, and Ben, obviously, has his own thing. Henry, Gal, we're all but on set. And when we're together, it's like a big family. And it's, there's not any problems. We didn't have one problem. No egos, no, no drama. And when you're in, your costumes and it's hot or it's cold or it's, you know, you're just in hell together. Playing a scene with, with all of those iconic caped characters uh, was, uh, you know, it's, just, it's like doing a baseball movie or a, or a cowboy movie, you know, it's one of those boyhood fantasy things come true. It's really fun. The cast is probably the funniest group of people you could probably get together in one room. I think everybody brings something very unique to the group and just watching all the different personalities come together. It kind of feels like what the actual Justice League would feel like. It's hard for me to imagine it any other way now. It was even just an incredible progression just to meet them, you know, just to meet them for the first time uh, or like the moments where we were all together even before we were in suit, but just to really feel the dynamic. The dynamic is really special. Um, I think I, I really love the, my fellow Justice League members. I'm delighted that so many generations, not just children, are, are, are quite taken up with these stories and these characters. It's lovely to be part of that fictional universe. Batman and, you know, Superman and um, a lot of these core DC characters still don't seem dated. They somehow still work in stories today. And I think that's just the mark of uh, characters that are very well drawn and ha ha uh, that they still have this kind of resonance, you know, that they, the, and that they were invented in the 1930s. It is super exciting to finally bring all these superheroes, the Justice League, to the screen for the first time. I, I think people have been waiting for this for so many years and to finally get to the chance to do it, it's, it's humbling and it's exhilarating. And um, I think sometimes you just walk on set and you can't believe that you're here actually doing it and filming this. Batman, is, of course, has more gadgets than anybody. Um, he's got more big toys. We introduce this thing called the Flying Fox. 
Uh, but he's still got his amazing grappling gun, and he's still got um, a new suit that he's going to put on uh, to help him in his this particular adventure. Um, and uh, he has, uh, as Bruce Wayne, many satellites, so he's able to um, have you know amazing amount of reach and access just being immortal, which is always great. There's a modified Batmobile which is tricked out to take on the alien race, so it's made a little bit more lethal. And um, and then there's the Batwing, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's a ship that he flies around in, and he's got his huge like triple uh, seven that he just flies around when he needs to be transported somewhere. And he's building this bigger plane that he wants to be to go longer distances. So Bruce Wayne has no shortage of ways to get around. Michael Wilkinson has done an amazing job with all these costumes. I mean, the biggest challenge in a way was figuring out how to translate these costumes of these beloved heroes that have, you know, been in comics for, you know, some of them 75 years. And how do you translate them and still keep the things that all the fans love about them in it, but also, you know, strike a balance to what a modern superhero costume and a modern audience is looking for? When you put everything on, whether it's holding the trident, put the eyes in, you put the costume on, it being heavy or not, it's just you're right into the character. And that's a beautiful thing. That's when you're working with really talented artists, from props to obviously Michael, who has made all of our costumes, and they're amazing. The props, I pick up and touch anything that's not nailed down. I'm picking up all the batarangs, all the, all the devices that he has, anything that's not nailed to the floor. I'm always touching it, picking it up, seeing what the deal is because everything is so detailed. Even in Star Labs, all the paperwork that you see sitting on the desks, somebody's gone through and written very specific things on those papers. It's crazy the amount of detail that they put into these things. Michael Wilkinson, who's the costume designer, he's just world class. Uh, there's nothing more to say about that and he comes with innovative uh, wardrobe looks continuously. Patrick Gatopoulos, who is the production designer, his concept design is always arresting, uh, striking, and it goes beyond uh, just the, you know, the tech. It because it, it, his cost, his uh, production design literally also goes into certain character design, uh, particularly if we're dealing with a, a you know, a, a CG character. Uh, even if it's a character that we're doing with mocap, you know, um, he's uh, a great visionary force. You actually kind of geek out because you, when you get to see everyone, they look unbelievable. Like it's truly like a little fan, I don't know, fanboy moment or just you feel like a little kid and you're like, that's Batman. And you just get a look at Batman and you kind of poke him and like, he's like staring at him like, it's cool. Fans are really going to enjoy being introduced to these characters that they've known and loved for many years. Um, to see Flash on the big screen for the first time and, and get a glimpse of what his character is and what his superpowers are. To see Aquaman, to see Cyborg, to see the Justice League interacting together on screen is pretty amazing because they all have such unique personalities. They all have special powers and abilities. And to see them coming together as a team and working as a team is just a lot of fun. You're never too old. You're never, uh, you're never somebody who's been or seen too much to not be able to be inspired. Um, and you know, inspiration is a wonderful thing because it motivates you to do something. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've been attracted to these characters, as I said earlier, since I was a preteen reading comics at the local liquor store. And um, I love the fact that DC has continued to um, reimagine these characters, but always keep them inspirational, you know, aspirational and inspirational, you know, and I think that that's really important. Barry Allen slash The Flash. Uh, is inherently interested in quantum mechanics because he's running into them. So yeah, he's an explorer. You know, he's a he's a voyager. Uh, I think that's something that's 
made the Flash such an interesting character for all of its history is that it's someone who can run into our ideas about physics, about how the world works. Um, it's a character very much inspired by physics and by the works of these incredible people like Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein, some of the people who I think Barry's really interested in, people who I'm really interested in, so it works out. Cyborg's role is access for the Justice League. He allows them, uh, he allows them information, he, allow, he allots them information that they couldn't possibly know on their own. Uh, he's also able to repair technology, you know, essentially, essentially with a thought. He's able to manipulate this technology and force it to repair itself, repair. He's able to uh, solve the most complex problems that they couldn't solve on their own. You know, we're dealing with a lot of really smart people in the Justice League, but I think cyborgs, uh, cyborgs, cybernetics give him an advantage in that way. Diana does good because that's the only thing that she's, she cares about. She doesn't care for the fame or for the glory or for the credit. She's not there for that. And I think that that's why she wasn't interested in getting too involved uh, out there with press and with people and, you know, being Wonder Woman. Um, as far as she concerned, she, she did everything that she could. She came to the rescue every time she was needed. She, she fought whenever she was needed. The threat is, is Batman coming and seeking um, help because Superman is gone, as we learned in the last movie. And there's something big coming, something bigger than the world has ever seen. And now we don't have Superman. So what are we going to do? He feels like all these metahumans, these amazing people or gods with power, need to band together and form a team to save the world. We bring something that is easy to relate to. Yes, she's a god. Yes, she's the greatest warrior of all times, but she's vulnerable and she's sincere and she, she can lose her confidence from time to time and she's hurt, but she cares and she's warm and she's loving. And, you know, these are qualities that all of us has. Um, so yes, for me, these, qualities are what makes these movies more interesting. So there's these great comedic moments. It's super action adventure. We're all over the place. A lot of sets that are like, we're in tons of big, beautiful sets. And then it's a whole world that you've just never seen before.